All right, folks. Hello. Welcome back to our example of the titration stoichiometry between acetic acid, the weak acid, and strong base um, hy sodium hydroxide. So in our last part of this question, we were tasked with determining the predicted or experiment or theoretical, excuse me, equivalence point, meaning what volume of sodium hydroxide would need to be added so that all of our moles of acetic acid in the sample would be neutralized by that same equal amount of moles. That's what it means to be at the equivalence point. And now in this part of the problem, we are being asked to determine the initial pH of the acetic acid or of the sample. So this is the pH of the acetic acid sample. before any hydroxide has been added. So before we've even begun the titration, we put our pH probe into the beaker, and we are now going to theoretically calculate what that pH should be reading at. So let's remind ourselves about the definition of pH. So recall, pH is defined to be the negative log of concentration of acidic protons, or if we're talking about in solution with water, concentration of the hydronium ion. Meaning if I'm going to find the pH of this solution, then I absolutely need to know the concentration of H3O plus. So this is what I need to determine, to find pH. So again, this is not asking for the pH when any of our hydroxide is added to the solution. We just want to figure out how much H3O plus is present when I've got my prepared sample of acetic acid. So remember, acetic acid is a weak acid, which means it partially puts or contributes hydronium ion in solution as described by its acid dissociation constant, which I've written here. So if I'm going to determine the amount of hydronium that is put into solution when I have just this sample of acetic acid in front of me, I need to use an ice table to figure out that equilibrium concentration of hydronium. Because again, these acids dissociate partially and this exists in a dissociation equilibrium. So I'm going to go ahead and write out the acid dissociation equation for acetic acid. So that's CH3COOH in the presence of water, establishing a dissociation equilibrium to become H3O plus. Plus acetate ion minus this is the acid particle. It's one of our dissociation products. And the acetate ion, the other of our dissociation products, is the conjugate base of acetic acid. So again, the difference between conjugate pairs is only one H, right? This is the protonated. This is the deprotonated version. And they have to be ions that are the deprotonated versions of a weak substance or vice versa, ions that are the protonated version of a weak like base substance, which we'll get into later. All right, trying to figure out what's going on in terms of once my dissociation has reached its dissociation equilibrium, so I need to figure out what's going on with my initial acetic acid concentration in the beaker. Recall, we don't do anything involving liquid water. And initially, pre-dissociation, we assume that our concentration of hydronium and acetate are zero. 
So let's see if we can't go find this value in our prior work. So we need to figure out concentration of acetic acid in this beaker. So we got this when we did our C1V1 equals C2V2 dilution calculation, which gave us an acetic acid concentration of 0.04 molar. So I know that before any of my hydroxide has been added, that the concentration of molecular or protonated um, undissociated is another way to think about that. Acetic acid is 0 0.040 molar. Okay, this neutralization is one-to-one -one stoichiometrically. So I'm going to take away some amount of X and then add that same amount of X to my products on when I undergo a dissociation where I here <laughs> and the acetic acid. So at equilibrium, 0 0.040 molar minus X is my concentration of acetic acid. And X are the, relative, are the concentrations of my hydronium and my acetate respectively. So I can set up a Ka expression, which is concentration of my dissociation products over concentration of my acid, my reactant. And these are all at equilibrium because we are considering a proportion of things in the equilibrium constant, not just some quotient Q. So this would be equal to X times X, which is X squared over 0 0.040 minus X. And because this K is within what we've determined to be an okay bound for the small x approximation, so it's got a value of like 10 to the negative five or smaller, then I'm going to apply that small x approximation and say this is equal to x squared over 0 0.040. So now I have my Ka, 1.8 times 10 to the negative five is equal to x squared over 0 0.040 or x squared is equal to the product of my Ka and 0 0.040. So let's figure out what that is. 0.04 times 1.8 times 10 to the negative five. This gives me 7.2 times 10 to the negative seven molar squared, which means that x is the square root of that which I get as 8.485 times 10 to the negative 14. Nope, 10 to the negative four, I can read. 10 to the negative four molar. And remember, X is what we said was our equilibrium concentration of our acid. So have we answered this question? I've got my equilibrium concentration of my hydronium, the acidic particle in solution, but I need to find my pH. So now it's time for me to use my pH equation, which is taking the negative log of that concentration. So let's figure out how we do that. Let's maybe do right here. So pH is equal to the negative log of my concentration H3O plus, which is equal to negative log base 10 of 8.485 times 10 to the negative four. All right. So I've got negative log 8.485 times 10 to the negative four. I get a pH of 3.07. So three sig figs about rounding. And we can ask ourselves if this makes sense. So a pH of three, that is certainly one that is an acidic pH, right? pHs that are less than neutral, less than seven are considered acidic.
And since we are looking at the initial pH of the acetic acid solution, which is dissociating into H3O plus and the conjugate, we do expect for this to be an acid solution. It should have a low pH. So yay, we are sane. We can do math. Hooray. In our next video, we're going to think about what happens when we start to add our hydroxide because some kind of chemistry is going to happen there and that's going to affect everything going on in our little sample beaker. So we'll see you in our next video where we determine the pH of the solution after we've add five milliliters of sodium hydro hydroxide titrant.